Romans Road to Salvation. First, in Romans 3.10, it says, As it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. That's the part I'm talking about. When I hear this, I live life best I know how and I try. You can't work your way to heaven. It's just not going to happen. If you think you're getting there that way, when he says, I don't know you, you're going to be in that crowd. But it's easier than that, but more complicated. That means nobody's perfect. There's no exception. And in Romans 3.23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody. The only sinless man ever lived was Jesus Christ. And he came to set an example. And he had the ability to sin because he was here in the flesh. None of us meet God's holy standards. Where did sin come from? As we talked about when Adam and Eve fell, we inherited that. So if this is in Romans 5, 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin. Man didn't die before the fall. And so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Adam uh, made that debt for us, him and, him and his bride. Here's what it cost us for that. In Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. That death is not just a physical death that didn't exist before Adam and Eve ate the fruit, but the other death is spiritual death, and that's in eternal separation from God the Father and Jesus and the Holy Ghost for eternity. And I don't care. I've heard people say they were going to make a deal with the devil when they got there. Well, it's going to be hard to do because actually hell wasn't created for any of us. It was created for a rebellious Lucifer and a third of the angels that wanted to be above God and, and fell like lightning and got cast out of heaven. And that's what it was created for. And Satan is going to be bound and in chains and punishment just like the rest of them. So that's where it came from. And that's what the cost is. Because of our sins, we were supposed to die. But Jesus came, as we said, only we're going to use the Romans road passage and pay that debt for us. Romans 5 8, God commanded his love towards us in that we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. I've had a lot of people over the years of ministry say, I just got to take care of some things first. Then I can do this get saved thing. Well, I think it's clear here. You can't get there and you don't have to get there. It's like that song Billy Graham's Crusades made famous, just as I am. That's how you come to the Lord. You come just as you are. Instead of dying, Jesus died in our place to give us life. So here's the way out in Romans 10, 9, and 10. And I use this a lot because then there's nobody thinks they're a Christian because their grandma was or their wife is. And there's nobody thinks that we're a basically Christian nation or that they got good enough. Here's the key. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him shall not be ashamed. And in Romans 10, 13, it says, Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus is the only way out. Did I clarify anything this morning? Did I make it where nobody will leave here and have any questions about what happens if I'm a fatality on the way home? What happens if I walk out the door and have a heart attack and I, I, I don't take my next breath? It says you can know you have eternal life. It's just I'm afraid that old liar of the devil makes a bunch of people think they got it that didn't confess with their mouth and believe in their heart. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm going to keep this brief because I brought what God told me to bring. But I am going to lead us in a prayer of repentance and I'll make it short. And any of you that haven't done that, that, that feel 
the Holy Spirit speaking to you and tugging on your hearts and like to. Just repeat this after me. And I'm not telling you it'll be a rocket ship difference. Some people have phenomenal feel difference and some don't. But when you do that, that angel up there in heaven takes that big book of life and he says, right there on August 20th or 21st, whatever it is, he says, that person accepted Jesus' gift of salvation. They've got a RSVP right here in heaven. And if you didn't and you rejected that and it's not there, it's cast out. It's not that it's fire and brimstone that you should neglect or you should preach holy. You just have to preach the whole book. But there is a fire and a brimstone. And we've been given a way out. So I'm going to close us with this. And any of you that feel led, feel free to repeat this after us. And then we're going to close. Father, I know I broke your law. And my sins have separated me from you. I'm truly sorry. And now I want to turn away from my past sinful life and turn toward you. Please forgive me and help me to avoid sinning again. I believe that your son Jesus died for my sins was resurrected from the dead and is alive and here's my prayer. I invite Jesus to become the Lord of my life, to rule and reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. That concludes our service for this year's show fest. God made it very clear that when I left here this year, make sure nobody had any questions about that. Y'all know how to reach me. I'm at your disposal whether it's something you're going through or if you've made that confession in the past and got sidetracked or if it's a new one and you just like to do things to mature in your walk. If you don't have a Bible, i got bunches of different ones. Several of you have had them, got some outlines in them. I'll be happy to send you one. If you're having trouble finding a place to fellowship, I can give you some insights on that. I'm here to help you in any way I can. I'm nobody. That alone should tell you there's a guy that he took a flunky like me and, and made him into a preacher. I mean, I'm nobody. Well, let's close in a, another prayer and we'll be dismissed. Lord, I thank you for this time that we've had together in fellowship, and I thank you that so many showed an interest in your word and didn't have a church every year at the Shovel Fest. And Lord, I rejoice. You said... When somebody comes to you, the angels in heaven have a party. So, Lord, we rejoice with them that I believe we've had some, some new salvations here this morning. And we rejoice if there's any that has stumbled that wanted to find a new freshness in their walk with you. Lord, I don't think anybody could, here could say you haven't made your presence known in the Shovelhead family because, Lord, throughout the Bible, You've got a long history of revealing yourself to people, and I believe you've revealed yourself to us in the show we had for them. But now, Lord, I pray that as each day goes on, that we'll be in closer fellowship with you. And I thank you for the good fellowship and the tight-knit family that you've given us here. Lord, just bless all those that's been here give us all safe journeys on the way home and supernatural if it takes to make the vehicles all get there and just thank you for this time we've had together in Jesus name Amen, Amen. 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 Amen.